Hello, my name is Frank van der Borden. I'm a solution engineer at Oracle in the Netherlands. In this demo, short demo, I will be showing the setup and configuration and the usage of centrally managed users, um, which was added as a feature in Oracle database 18C and onwards. For this demo, we need to do a, a couple of things. Uh, we need a service account. The service account needs to uh, read all user information, um, delegated control, and we need to configure a so-called dsi.ora file for the, uh, for the database to connect to Active Directory. Then we need the root certificate from Active Directory to be able to uh, to connect using TLS to Active Directory. The security parameters and the uh, certificate will be added to the wallet. We need to set a, a database initialization parameter, LDAP underscore directory underscore access. In Active Directory, we'll, we'll create uh, one or two groups, a group for a shared database account and a group additionally for, uh, for a role assignment. And we will create the database user to cre create the database role and grant the privileges. And then we, I will show the, uh, the connection and uh, the outcome of the connection. Okay, let's go to uh, to the demo uh, environment. First of all, I will go to my Windows machine. In the Windows machine, as stated, we I will create a service account. I already created that service account, but I will show you it. It's called CMU service. It doesn't need any specific privileges, account information, I I set it to password never expires for ease of use. Otherwise, uh, if the password expires, then we have to again um, do some of the work in the connection settings. So then we need to uh, alter the wallet information, the security information in the wallet. So for that reason, I never expire the password. The delegate control to give read all user information can be done in the users uh, users section, delegate control. There we are going to add a user and that will be the CMU service user. And then in the next, scre next screen, I can grant or delegate the read all user information. As stated here, write seems not to be needed here and because I use Kerberos authentication and write uh, is only necessary, in my opinion, if you want to do a password to reset, but uh, even that, I don't think it's, it's relevant, but read all user information is the, uh, the minimal privilege or yeah, delegated control that, the, that is needed. So when this, that is done, um, we can export the root certificate. The root certificate, I already did that using cert util minus ca cert and then file name, ca.cert and then a, a file name. Um, that, the, that root certificate is copied over to the database machine and from there, I will continue my uh, my demo. So let's move over to the, uh, the database server. So in the database server, I'm going to show you the dsi.ora file. So in the DSI, I, it's in my case, I have set a TNS admin environment variable. And there we have, 
dsi.ora. So my directory server is running on a machine called win 2016kdc.bordora.nl and it listens both for non-SSL or non-TLS and TLS connections. 636 is the port we are going to use. So we need uh, the root certificate. Then the admin context is CN equals users DC Bordora DC NL and the directory server type is AD. Then um, the next thing to do is to create a wallet and add um, the, these security settings and as well as the root certificate. Let me display my wallet information. The wallet is stored also in the TNS admin directory in my uh, demo environment. So we have the trusted root certificate and we have a security DN, security password and the security username for the service. So the uh, CMU service. And then I'm going to connect as SQL uh, as sysdba, auto session to the auto session to my PDB. And in the PDB, I will show you the uh, parameter containing LDAP. So the LDAP directory access has been set to password, meaning that uh, through the DSI.ora with the security information in my wallet, the database can connect to as uh, CMU servers to my LDAP directory to the Active Directory, uh, sir, uh, Active Directory, and from there read the user's context and find uh, find information about the users we are going to create in the next step. So now what I can do is go to my Windows machine again. In the Windows machine, I will show you my HR users. So I have, like in the uh, in the presentation, I have Susan, I have Jennifer, I have uh, another user. Where is it? Diana. Those are the users that I have, and also I have my HR uh, groups. So I have my HR admin group. And the members of that are Diana, Jennifer, and Susan. And I have my HR manager group. And my HR manager group has Susan as a member. So next, what we can do what we will do is uh, I will create the user HR admin, grant connect and a role to the user so that each HR uh, clerk or HR admin user will get the role HR underscore read. And then I will create a role HR manager identified globally to connect it to the HR underscore MGR group in, in AD. So let's continue with that. Create user like this. This will, this will create the user. Then I can grant connect to the user or create session, whatever we need to connect to the database. I create a role HR read, and typically I would grant select on the HR tables to HR read, but the HR schema is not in this database, so I will not give those privileges, but the role will be granted after all. Then I grant 
the, the local role HR read to HR admin. This can also be done using globally defined role, of course, but for the demo, I will do it this way. And next for the group HR manager in my active directory, I will create a role HR underscore MGR. And I will, uh, in real life, I would grant, for instance, update on my HR tables to this role HR manager. HR manager and HR admin we've seen in my active directory. Let's con get back to that. HR manager and HR admin, and I showed you the members already. Jennifer is in HR admin and not in HR manager. Susan is in both. So let's first connect as Susan. I will destroy my Kerberos context so that I don't have any interference of a previous session. I will use the Jennifer login with OK in it. OK in it will fetch me the Kerberos ticket. This is the password for Jennifer in Active Directory. And now if I connect to my database with a slash, Kerberos kicks in, gives me a single sign on. Show user will show me HR admin. Select star from session roles will give me connect and read. Connect and HR read. That's it. Now I can quit, do an OK destroy, and do an OK in it as Susan. Oh. Yeah, so I'm now have my Kerberos ticket for Susan, as you can see here. And now if I connect to BDVM19 with a slash, I am logged on as Susan. I can show you that in my session context. Yeah, you can see that Susan has been logged on. And if I select star from session roles, you can see that next to HR read, I also have the HR manager role. What happens now if uh, Susan leaves the company? Then we will remove the account from Active Directory for Susan. It was not what I meant to do. Susan, and hit delete. So Susan has left the company. Now, if I try to log on again with the same ticket that I still had in my position, then uh, the, the logon fails, of course. Next, uh, next will be the mover process because HR manager role now or the group doesn't have any uh, uh, any members. But we will promote Jennifer to be the manager for HR. So that's it. And now if I go back to my database machine, do a OK destroy. And then as Jennifer log on. Now we can SQL plus show user will show again the HR admin as expected. Select star from session roles. We'll show HR read and HR manager. That's because of the promotion of uh, Jennifer to become uh, uh, HR manager. And that concludes my demo.
um, if there are, are any questions, please post them on YouTube and uh, I will be happy to, uh, to answer them to you. Thank you for your uh, time and uh, attention. Bye.